who's learned ever. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for our kids. Thank y'all for our helpers who wants to uh, serve our kids because they are, you know, the kingdom. We have to transfer this into them. Very important. We lay the foundation. And so uh, I'm excited for those that are taking up the mandate that wants to teach the kids. Amen. Amen. And so uh, let's go to work. You want to set that uh, banner up for me right there? I can sit right there. You can just put it right there. Yeah. If you don't want it, you need to go to the restroom, you can do it. I want back over there. We want to agree everyone who's watching us live. We thank you for tuning in to our Shabbat service. Let's give them a hand, y'all, for tuning in. Amen. 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 Uh, very important that we understand, guys, that that the more I talk to people, the more I realize that we really don't know our Bible. And so we're living in a, a stage of spiritual ignorance, uh, a lack of education when it comes to the Holy Scriptures. Uh, most of us have a lot of sermons in our mind, but we can't put things together. And so the purpose of going back to Genesis is so that we can lay a foundation. Genesis is the foundation. The Torah is the foundation. So you have to understand that. Uh, so we're not going to paste things together uh, as we travel back to the book and then begin to move forward. You will begin to understand some things. So it's very important. Paul tells us in 1 Timothy, are you there, Marcel? Paul tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 4, we'll read verse 1. This is very important as we move forward in our class and, and, and to become students, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 4, look at what verse 1 says. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Uh -huh. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, in doctrines of devils. Now, notice what Paul said that the Spirit says, okay? That the Spirit says that men are going to depart. Yes. They are going to be a falling away. Now, this was in the, the first century, so how much more now? Yes, so Paul didn't say this. He said the Spirit says it, okay? Departing from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrine of demons. Now, any teaching that does not line up with the scripture is doctrine of demons. Right. It doesn't matter. If I'm teaching that that he rose on, 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 on Easter, that's a doctrine of demons. If I'm teaching that he was born on Christmas, those are doctrines of demons. Right. It's not scripture. Okay? Amen. And so we have to be very careful as we begin to examine the text. <laughs> Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. We'll pick it up in verse 1. This is what Paul charged Timothy to do. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Uh -huh. I charge thee, therefore, before Yah uh -huh. and our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, who shall judge the quick and the dead as his appearing in his kingdom. Uh -huh. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. Uh -huh. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. Uh huh. Go ahead. And they shall turn away from turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Think about that. This is what Paul is telling Timmy. Right. But Paul telling Timmy, don't get caught up in telling stories. The man of Yah or the woman of Yah is to preach the unadulterated word. Am I right? Yes, sir. So if you don't know the word, then how are you going to preach it? How are you going to teach it? So it's very important that the body of Messiah has suffered because of the verse that said, stay away from stories. I open the Bible and I, I read one verse and then I start telling you a story. No, 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 no. You preach the Lord God, the bar, the word. So he's telling Timothy, don't get caught up in that stuff. Don't get caught up in the prosperity teaching and all that because people's churches are growing because they're going and finding people that want to preach what they want to preach. 
So Paul said, don't get caught up in that, Timothy. You preach the word, the sound doctrine. And so now when I'm teaching sound doctrine, what that does to you is that this eating, this is eating. We're, listen, we're digging in the book. That's called eating. When you spend time in the book, man, after a while, you start feeling energized, man, because the word, the word is alive. And so that's why I'm teaching the way that I'm teaching, so that you'll be able to teach others, to explain to others. Thank Go to First Timothy chapter, I mean, First Peter chapter 3. This is my sole purpose of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because a lot of my dialogue with people is that they don't understand the scriptures, okay? But my job here is that when you leave this place, when you go around your family and your friends and they ask you, they're going to ask you, what are you doing? What are you learning? I want you to be able to tell them. Yes, sir. I don't want you to have to say, well, my pastor said it. I want you to go to the scriptures. Yes, sir. Amen? And that's what Tim, uh, uh, Peter is saying in First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the um, the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you for a reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. Notice that. So Peter saying that I want you to be ready, and the word that he used with answer is apologetic, meaning that you ought to defend the faith. You have to know the doctrine. There are certain doctrines that you got to know that he died. And then for three days, not on Friday, because you can't get three days out of Friday. You see, you have to be able to defend that when they talk about sunrise service. You have to be able to defend that stuff. So sound doctrine, sound doctrine is very important. Amen. Amen. So now, as you see this chart here. I want you to be able to get familiar with this chart that you'll be able to put everything back. This is like a, a, a puzzle. And what I'm doing now is, is, is I'm trying to lay the frame on it so that once we lay the frame on it, then you'll be able to put people where they need to go. Very important. So I put this out here so that you can look at it week after week, week after week. Knowing that if you're going to deal with our family being in exile and bondage in Babylon, if you want some background, some history, you got to read uh, Lamentation, Ezekiel, and Daniel. You have to know that all three of these books go together. You have to understand that. And so you can understand in Ezekiel when he said, can these bones live? He's telling them that these bones are so dry. He's telling them that, yeah, they dry. Yes, they have no life. But I'm going to tell you, you're coming out of exile. He tell you that this, this whole house is the whole house of Israel. So if I'm going to study while they was in bondage in Babylon, I got to study all three of these books together. Together. And we talked about last week that, that when King Cyrus made a proclamation for Yehuda to come back into the land, you had to study all these books together. You just can't study, will a man run God? You can't do that. You have to study all this here, and then you have a beautiful picture. Ezra was the priest who was in charge of the offering, getting people heart back right. Okay, getting people heart right. Then you see Nehemiah was building the walls. Once you study these books, you'll see that everybody has a function in the kingdom restoration. Everybody has a job to do. So when we look at the priesthood in Ezra, you'll see that Ezra had the Levites helping and everybody was coming and people was rejoicing. They they haven't heard the Torah in, in years and they say that people stood up all day listening to the Torah because they were so happy coming out of Babylon. It was incredible how you see Ezra and, and Nehemiah and it was the king, the king Cyrus said that the Most High has anointed me he was anointed to go back. He said, whoever want to go back, go back. He has charged me to build him a house. Can you imagine? To understand King Cyrus is like President Trump getting on the TV and said, the most high has charged me to reward all the black people in America. Hallelujah. You say, he, he must be crazy. That's the kind of statement you have to understand. <laughs> I will give y'all acres and your mule. <laughs> Think about that. That's a, that's a powerful statement right there. 
So you have to understand that the 70 years. Now, let's talk about this here. Because I want to help you deal with why should we study the Torah. I'm going to move slowly so that you can have some, some ammunition. So that when you, remember, when you come in here, you're learning for yourself. Study to show yourself approved. Am I right? So that means that you got to have your pencil and your paper. This is to equip you. This is to equip you, okay? I know this stuff, but it's to equip you so that when your adversaries come to you and ask, why y'all studying that book? Why y'all doing this here? So as Peter said, being ready always to give an answer in the spirit of meekness. That means humble yourself. And when you know something, when you know something, your face just light up when you know the answer. When you know the answer, oh my goodness, when you know the answer. And so that's my sole purpose here, that I want to equip you to do the work. Because we go, when we leave this place, we go to different places. And only you can reach the people in your world, your world, your friends, your co-workers, the people that you know. That's your world. So when you go to all the world, all your world, the people that's in your world. That's what he's talking about. Amen. So now, let's look at the survey of the Holy Scripture. Now, so I'm going to equip you here, okay? So the question is, why should we study the Old Testament? Okay? Why should we study the Old Testament? I don't even like the name, but I have to use that so people in America know what I'm talking about. Because if I use the concept, the Tanakh, or it should be called the Holy Scriptures. Okay? And you have to understand that where we got the term the Old Testament was from a gentleman by the name of what? Masayan. He created that phrase Old Testament. So it's not biblical. If you're going to call the scriptures anything, call it the Holy Scriptures. Paul tell Timothy in 2 Timothy, uh, 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 chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, he said, For thou hast known the Holy Scriptures from thy youth, which is able to make thee wise into salvation. Then he said, All scripture is given by inspiration. So Paul tell Timothy, You know the Holy Scriptures from thy youth. So why should we study? Why should we study the Tanakh or the Holy Scriptures? Let's go to Luke chapter twenty-four. I'm gonna take my time here. So now I'm a, uh, now remember I'm I'm giving you ammunition, but I want I want you to load up your uh, 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 your your spiritual shotgun. Right. I don't know these days. I don't know if that's a good word to use. <laughs> So in, in Luke chapter 24, we're going to pick it up in verse 25 and 27, and then we're going to read verses 44 and 45. So now, our first section is, why should we study the Tanakh or the Old Letters or the Holy Scriptures? Go ahead. <coughs> Luke chapter 24, verse 25. And then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ the Mushak to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Uh huh. And at the beginning at Moses. Notice, had, beginning at Moses. Hold on, son. Beginning at Moses. This is very important. Beginning at Moses. Uh -huh. He's telling you, beginning at Moses. Right. Okay, so if he's our teacher, should we follow his example? Absolutely. Listen, we need to understand that we set Yahshua as our, our Savior, but you understand, he's a teacher. He's a rabbi. He's the master teacher. So if I'm his student, I should know his lesson. Am I right? So if he began with Moses, we ought to begin with Moses. Okay. Go ahead. 27 again. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, uh -huh. he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Verse 44. Uh -huh. Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding mm -hmm. that they might understand the scripture. Mm, that's what I'm trying to do. So the first thing that we see while we should study the Torah, he says here that all things must be fulfilled. So he's teaching them. He's teaching them about him in the Torah. Right. It's very important we understand that he's keep pointing us back to the Torah. Pointing us back to the Torah. 
Incredible. Let's go to John chapter 10. He tells us something else in John chapter 10, verse 35. I love the sound of the pages. Amen. I love that. I'm telling you, I, I do. John chapter 10, verse 35 says what? John 10, 35. And he called them gods unto whom the word of Yah came. And scripture cannot be broken. No, the scripture cannot be broken. In other words, you can't break off the older letters and then just receive the new letters. Very good. Okay? Very good. You can't break them up. You can't split it up. I can't break off a piece and say, here, you can have this here. You take, no, no. You should say, you can't break it up. You can't split it up. In all one book. That's why I showed y'all before. Between, we say all scriptures is inspired. But there's a page in there that's not inspired. It's called the, between Malachi and Matthew. That page is not inspired. I ripped it out of my Bible in the front of my class one time. They said, whoa. Yes, because it's one book. So if you ever open minds up, it ain't that. I ripped it out. It's not that. It, it don't supposed to be there. It's, it's not inspired. That's the wall that man put back up. The shoe has broken down the middle wall. Hallelujah. Then who put that wall back up? Man. This is one whole book. This one whole book. So if you look in your Bible, it's mine's, mine's ain't there. I ripped it out. I ripped it out. It's one book. It's flowed like that. So now when you put a wall up, there is a division. Wow. Me and Marcel was cool. And then all of a sudden I put up a fence, a big fence. So you know that we ain't cool no more, right? Mm -hmm. So, and so, so who put up the wall? Man did. And so has hindered us. So everything on this side, watch this, is for Christians. And everything on this side is for the Jews. It's one book. It's one Amen. book. Amen. It's Hallelujah. one book. So if, I, listen, if I'm studying the Torah and you studying this here, how can we be the same? We can't. We can't. Because when you look at the Torah or the Tanakh is from Genesis to Malachi, it's called the Tanakh. It's, it's really an acronym. It's not a word, okay? The Torah, the law, and the prophets, okay? And so now you can see that it's one book. And when you look at the letters of Paul, all Paul is doing, he's, he's giving you doctrine. He's explaining things. So the Tanakh, if you keep this in your mind, the Tanakh is the dictionary for the Brit Hadashah. Okay, so if you want to know what faith means, you got to go back to the Torah. I can say the Torah, the Torah, the Bible of Moses is the foundation. It's the dictionary. So if you want to know what grace is, go to the Torah. Uh, Noah found grace in the sight. Well, he was saved from the, the wrath of Yah. So grace is to be saved from the wrath of Yah. So you don't come to the New Testament, so-called, which is the brick hollow shot. You don't come to the New Testament and try to, to define a word. It already been defined. Yeah. Very important. Let's look at another. Matthew chapter 22, verse 29. Matthew chapter 22, verse 29. This is another problem that we have. And this is why we should have studied the Tanakh. The older letters, the Torah, the prophets, the Psalms. Mm -hmm. All right, 60 seconds. Go ahead. Matthew twenty-two twenty-nine. 29. Yeshua answered and said unto them, Ye do error, not knowing the scriptures, Ooh. nor the power of Yah. Do you hear that? Yes, sir. They are talking about the resurrection. He's dealing with the resurrection. You know, who, 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 who why will she be? No, no, he's saying your problem is that you do error. Notice. If you don't know the scripture, you will err. Yes, sir. That's why I give you a lot of scriptures. That's why uh, people can't, can't hardly say nothing because I give you too, too many scriptures here. So your error can be because of, of the scripture. Okay? A good one here. Just to throw it out there. Now, I think they're going to give me sidetrack. I'm, I'm going to leave this on. <laughs> Let's go to another one. Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, a very familiar, but I want you to keep it in mind. A lot of your doctrine is because you error not knowing the scriptures. And if I'm just teaching you the letters of Paul, I'm teaching about, about, about believing God for your house, believing God for, you, for this, believing God for this healing, and all of this, I'm just, just giving you faith 
every week just to believe in things that y'all probably ain't said nothing to you about it, but he's trying to convince you. Nah, you do error not knowing the scripture. Matthew chapter 5, verse 18 says what? Start at verse 17. Matthew 5, 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law of the Torah or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Uh -huh. 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall not no wise pass from the law till be all fulfilled. All fulfilled. Now, why, I'm saying this is very important. Don't, we're reading these scriptures here, but you will have to deal with when you share this with your family and friends. Because they are convinced that the older letters has no effect. It's not important. And that's being taught. And you have to know how to apologetic, defend that doctrine. But you have to understand that most people error not knowing the scriptures. And so you in your world have to be able to share this information with your family and friends. And we ain't even got started yet. But I'm just laying a foundation down for you. Amen. Okay, you. now go to 2 Timothy. And I know some of y'all can know the scripture by heart, but I want to lay a strong, solid foundation so it can be settled so that you won't be soon shaken in your faith. Second Timothy 3, 15 and 16. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Yeshua HaMashiach. Go ahead. All scripture is given by inspiration of Yah, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Mm. That the man of Yah may be thoroughly furnished in all good works. Now, why we never thought that that, that the scripture that he was referring to was the older letters. Why well, never hit out of mind that when Paul write that to Timothy, there was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Why well, it never came to our mind? It never come to our mind. Then, like now, y'all do know that when Paul's writing that and when Yeshua is quoting, he's not quoting Paul. Why well, it never came to our mind? Why? Because when, when you and I, so that can tell you that I can teach you in a certain way that I can blind you. I can blind you. I can keep you right here where you never even look in the book. Right. Could have been the same, because one of the same words that the word for uh, serpent is the same word that's used for witchcraft. The same word. So, when Eve say that the serpent has begotten me, what did the serpent say? It's, 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 it's the same word that's used as in, in charming. So what word, how was these words that Satan said to her that put her in a spell? Ooh. Look, say it's the same word for a spell. So he's speaking to Eve, and his words were so smooth that it put her in a spell. The same way that now, now, now I know some women uh, uh, can choose to do that, but how can a pimp get a woman to sell her body and bring him back the money and love it? Wow. You think how words? So it show you the power of words. He seduced Eve. Said that the serpent had beguiled me. He actually, she actually thought that what he was saying was really true. So it can show me that people can, can be so smooth with the word of Yah that they cause you to disobey something that you know you shouldn't be doing. But they say it in such a way that Peter said they tailored the scriptures. Oh, come on. Taylor is what, listen, it's one thing to go buy a suit, but it's one thing to have a thing tailored for you. It fits just right. So they tell you the story because if you show up a a, a TDJ conference, they know that you're money hungry. Oh yeah. Show up at those kind of conferences, they know all the people that follow them is fake people. Believing in miracles, believing in all these supernatural want, want things. They know you covenants. You want things. And so they keep saying, put it in there. Leave all time and money coming. So people that come here is sound doctrine. People that come here want to know the scriptures. Yes, sir. 
That's why I said, I don't know if I put a curse on this place or what. I say, Master, don't bring, if they don't want to learn or study, don't bring them here. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got time. We, we, listen, we're talking about people hitting the books so that you won't be bamboozled by, by the crafting of these men that tailor the scripture, Peter said. They tailor. So we see here that all scripture is given by inspiration. You can share that with a friend and ask your, your mama, your daddy, whoever said that when Paul wrote this to Timothy, mama, you did know there was no New Testament around. That's right. So what scripture that he said that Timothy, that from thy youth, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which able to make thee wise. So if this scripture was able to make Timothy wise into salvation, can they make me wise into salvation too, mom? Like, yeah. See? But they didn't have a thinking. I don't know why. Because maybe we was bamboozled too. Let's look at another one. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. So we're talking about the survey. Why should we study the Tanakh or the older scriptures? We're going to see right here is written for our learning. 15, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Go ahead. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Mm. Notice that. These older letters that now notice Paul again, right into the Romans. He's saying that these things that was written a long time ago was written to teach us. So if if we don't read the books, if we are not taught the books, guess what we're doing? Repeating the same thing. It's those books that tell us thou shalt not worship any other Elohim. It's these books that tell us that these are the feasts. It's these books that tell us what idolatry is and Baal worship is. That's why we don't know what Baal worship is. It's right. these books that say take that Christmas tree out of your house. Don't even go in the forest and cut it down. Yeah. It's these books that say this is what you should eat and not eat. Yeah. You see? Very important. So is these books the holy scriptures that cause us to be a holy people? So basically, if you're not reading those books, then you might believe that Yahshua died, he rose, but you ain't living a holy life. You live in a code according to a religion. Think about that. Because the Torah teaches us what's holy and what's not holy. That pork chop is not holy. That shrimp is not holy. You see? So we have defined our own culture. Oh, yeah. Everybody has a culture. Don't believe they do. They decide what they want to eat. That's all it is. They decided what's fit for them to eat. So it's in these things, the Tanakh, the Torah, that teaches us how to be a holy Kadosh people. Thank you, y'all. It teaches us what they, that we are to come, what to set apart. All these things. You can't learn those from the letters of Paul because Paul not teaching those things. He figured that you already read the book. You already know. Let's go to first, first, uh, first Corinthians chapter ten. We're going to look at verses six and eleven. So these things is to prepare us how we know how to deal with the famine if we don't understand about the famine in the Torah. How we listen? How are we going to know about the greater exodus? That's going to happen. So in first Corinthians chapter uh, ten, verse six and eleven. Uh huh. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples that they are written for our emanation upon, uh, yeah, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now, you go back in verse 1, you will know what people that Paul is talking about. Starting verse 1 of chapter 10, verse 1. Now, he said that these things are written. What things, Paul, you're talking about? Go ahead. First Corinthians 10, 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for that they drank of that spiritual rock, that followed them, and that rock was sure. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That rock. Right? Go ahead. Verse 5. 
But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. See that? He's teaching context. So how do you know that if we don't study those books and look at the history where Paul says these things are written for our ammunition to teach us that we won't repeat the same thing, that how would I know what Baal worship is? How would I know that if I'm worshiping him in the spirit of truth or am I just worshiping him according to my denomination? And as I talked this morning, that the Holy Scripture is not a religion book. It's a kingdom book Amen. for kingdom people that enter into a covenant with the most high. It's not a religion book. It's a kingdom book for kingdom minded people. All right. So as we look at the Tanakh, okay, we just... I, just gave you some scriptures so that you can have a little foundation. Why should we study it? I think I gave you enough that you can just go home, look at these scriptures, put them on a card, put your little title. Why should we study this tonight and memorize these scriptures? You can do it. You can do it. Okay. Now, here's my next question here. Either the Old Testament is the word of Yah or we cannot believe Messiah words. What do you mean? I'm going to say it again. Why is it? I'm going somewhere with this here. Either the Old Testament is the word of Yah, or we cannot believe Christ's word or Messiah word. Why? Because that's all he quoted. That's all he quoted. So if we're going to believe him, and he only quotes from the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms, so if we believe that that book has no value, then we can't believe his words. All right. That's good. That's right. Very good. So we can't right. say, well, he only said that just to, you know, just to, you know, just so he can win them, but he really didn't believe in the Old Testament. He didn't really believe in the Bible. Oh, yeah. People think like that. He was just trying to accommodate them. Really? So let's look at some of the citations that Yahshua said about this this book because why this is this is so important because if you can't believe yahshua words then you'll fall for things like evolution you'll fall for same-sex marriage oh yeah let's go to matthew let's look at chapter 19. we'll start it up uh, uh, like Let's do one through four for a little context. So now we're going to use Yahshua to validate the Tanakh, the prophets, and the Psalms, because he is our rabbi, right? He's our teacher. So nobody should say, but 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 Paul. Paul ain't our teacher. Thank you. Huh? Paul was a minister. Paul is not our teacher. Paul is not our savior. No, it's not. So I don't care. You listen, if you and you do have a choice. If you have to choose between Paul and Yeshua, please have enough sense to choose Yeshua. Amen. Paul does not override what Yeshua has said. And it's amazing how many people that want to teach false doctrine have to say what well, Paul said. Paul said it. Paul override the master? They do error not knowing the scripture. So let's see what Yeshua says about marriage. Go to uh, verse uh, chapter 19. One through four. Matthew chapter 19, starting of verse 1. And it came to pass that when Yeshua had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee, and he came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for any cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read? That he which are made at the beginning made them male and female. Hold it right there. Now what is he doing? He's taking you back to Genesis. He's taking you back to Genesis. Notice he made them male and female. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Amen. Right? Yes. Right. See, see, see. They had to do away with the Genesis because Yahshua said, no, no, no. He made them male and female. So you cannot say that God made me this way. Amen. Amen. It's a choice. 
It's a choice. He says right here, either, either we believe Yeshua or we don't. But he says here, kids, they made you male and female. I don't care what the school trying to teach you. Male and female. This is a powerful doctrine here. Because he goes on in this teaching here. Go ahead, watch this doctrine here. Verse 5. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. Mm -hmm. And they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God had joined together, let no man put asunder. They said unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? And he said unto them, Moshe, because the, of the hardness of your hearts, suffer you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it, it was, was not like that. Right. So notice that. No, no. You should say, no, no, Moses, no. Because of the hardness of your heart. So now he's teaching. Now, this is the teaching on divorce, divorce and marriage. This is what he's dealing with right here. It ain't so. Y'all didn't make that up. Go ahead. Watch this here. Verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, his wife, except to be for fornication, and shall marry another, commits adultery, and whosoever marries her, which is put away, do commit adultery. This is the hard teaching right here. Yeah. Go ahead. His disciples said unto him, If the case of the man shall be if if oh, I'm sorry, King if King. the case of the man be so with his wife, is it not good to marry? <laughs> Verse 11. Uh -huh. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they to him it is given. For there are some Enochs which were born, which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there are be eunuchs which have been made themselves eunuchs and for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive mm. it. That's a powerful statement right there. That's a powerful statement. There's no way that you can override that. Because it's plain and simple. That he gives a call. They want to put away their wives for whatever reason. But he tells them, no, it's for the hardness of your heart. Then he gives you, okay, okay, I'm going to take this. This is what the scripture said. Only for fornication. Adultery. Other than that, it can't be. It can't be. Now, when you talk about marriage and stuff like that, then if a woman finds herself in an abusive, dangerous relationship, don't stay there. Find shelter. Amen. Amen. Okay? Because yeah. some women stays in a dangerous, unhealthy relationship uh -huh. that, uh, that, that, that she's been abused. No, find shelter. Get out of there. Amen. No, get out of there. But when we look at this here, that we can see, I want to talk about that, but you see the, uh, the plain simple simple of the word mm -hmm. so we see that yahshua validate the tanakh dealing with with uh, adam and eve do you see that because i'm going to use him as our foundation because he's our teacher okay let's go to another one matthew chapter 23 we're going to read just one verse for the sake of time because like i got a lot here okay now he's going to validate to more people Matthew chapter 23, verse 35. Go ahead. Matthew 23, 35. That upon you may come all the righteousness blood shall upon the earth, from the blood of righteousness Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachus, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Now notice, he threw a name in that Cain, you know what I'm saying, from Abel. Now he's using Abel, so notice he's taking you back to Genesis again. So, so I'm trying to show you that to lay a foundation that Yahshua is telling us that, yes, the Tanakh is the foundation. The Torah is the foundation. And if, if you ignore that, then what is your foundation built on? You can't build your foundation on the books of, of the letters of Paul because they're not books. They're epistles. They're letters. You cannot build that. And I'm going to show you as we move on. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 17, verse 27. So, so we saw Adam and Eve. We saw Abel. Now we go to see Noah. Chapter 17, verse 27. 
Okay, what's that? All right. Luke chapter 17, verse 27. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Mm. So he points, see, see how he's still in Genesis? There's so much there. He's laying the foundation for us. He's quoting why? Because that's all he had. So Yeshua walked around, he knew the Torah. He, he knew the Tanakh. So now, watch this here. If, if, if I study a book that he never studied, can I have the mind of Christ? No. I cannot. So when Paul said, let this mind be in you, what mind was in the Messiah? Torah. Torah. The prophets. The Psalms. So I can't act like him if I don't read the book that he read. So because we begin to read the book that he read, now we celebrate the feast that he fit. Right. Now we meet on the day that he met on. Right. Yeah. We eat like him. So now we be really becoming Christ-like or the Mushia, becoming like him. Let's go to another. Luke chapter 20, verse 37. Luke chapter 20, verse 37. Name for the about the date, a man most shaped. All right, Moses. Luke chapter 20, verse 37. Now that the dead are raised, even Moshe showed at the bush. When he called the or Yah, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Okay. Now he validate Moses. So now we can know that Moses is real. We can know that Moses is real or Yeshua making up stories. So when people say, well, Moses wasn't really real. No, listen, this how that you can discredit those that say Noah's flood wasn't real. Y'all see, well, you can discredit yeah, yeah. people that say that Adam and Eve wasn't real. Well, if we can't believe Yeshua and he said they are, then we need to find us another savior. You see how dangerous that is to say that these things don't exist and Yeshua quoting, talking about these people? Amen. That should build a strong foundation under you. So we see that Adam and Eve was real. Cain and Abel was real. Noah's blood is real. What the made up story. We see Moses' burning bush was real. Let's see another one. Luke chapter 4, verse 25. This is very important, guys, to understand. So as we begin to study, we're not studying, as they say, fables. We're, we're not studying just, just made-up stories. These things are the script in us. This is our book. This is the book of the covenant. We got to know about our forefathers. We got to know about our ancestors. It's in the book. Go ahead, Moses. Luke chapter 4, verse 25. But I tell you the truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and three months, mm -hmm. and so, a great famine was throughout all the land. Mm -hmm. So now we have Elijah. So he's real. So so yes, he went up. So the story about Elijah, when we study him, he's real. He's not a made-up person. Let's look at a couple more. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. Go ahead. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so sh shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So that wasn't a made-up story, then, huh? So Jonah and the whale was a real story? Yes, sir. Really? Is it about this what Yeshua said? So he said that he's going to be in the earth three days and three nights. Can somebody go to the board and show me how you can get that from Friday? When he came off the tree at three o'clock in the evening, half a day already gone. Am I right? So we know that's not all day. That's a half a day right there. Then, then you take all day Saturday. Then they say that he got up early Sunday morning. How many days is that, y'all? Come on. So how are you gonna get that? So what? What's the danger of that? Because somebody is gonna show these young kids how that. That Christians don't know how to count. So he wasn't in the grave, right? The kids, three days and three nights, right? So it is going to rock people's faith. Because while all Christian doctrine stands on the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua, 
if he's not risen, all I'm doing is teaching like a guru. Everything that we stand on stands on the resurrection of Yahshua. Amen. So he had to be, he had to go down and leave by Wednesday because it had to be all day, all day, three days and three nights. So that sunrise service don't, don't fit. That Friday, good Friday don't fit. Oh, I know I'm killing somebody's sacred cause, but it is what it is. So he said three days and three nights. He showed you as Jonah. And literally, I don't, I don't even want to go there. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 24. Because I'm trying to lay a foundation here. I'm just throwing little things out that when it's necessary. Because we know that he he, he uh, died. We know that he was in the grave three days and three nights. Right. Okay, we know that. But don't try to convince me that it's Friday. Because he risen. He is risen. Because we have testimony. Matter of fact, Paul said he was seen over by 500. Am I right? The graves opened up. Yeah. That's powerful testimony right there. The first fruit. Don't touch me yet. I got to go back to my father. First fruit. Oh, we got evidence. If not, this is the biggest deception in the world. Sure we have evidence. They have no evidence that Buddha has risen. Or nope. uh, Harry Christian and none of them. How y'all going to meet? How y'all going to get into the kingdom? Islam. Hindu. How y'all going to get in the kingdom when we have only one mediator? First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 said that's only one mediator. We don't need the Pope. Amen. We sure ain't praying to Mary. Amen. We only have one mediator between Yah and man, and that's Yahshua, the Messiah. Amen. Yes. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 24, verse, verse 15. Matthew 24, 15. When ye therefore shall see the emanation, emanation of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso reads, let him understand. Mm. So now he's he's taking us to Daniel. See how you, you see how he's using the book that he grew up in? He's using, he's a master teacher. He just told them about the resurrection. Y'all do error with not knowing the scriptures. He just told him in John 10, 35, you can't break the scripture up. And the Paul come along later. Paul said, all scripture is given, Timothy. Don't let nobody tell you, Timothy. You, you learn this thing from you, from your youth. Matter of fact, you got it from your grandmother. And it was in your mother, Lord, Lord's too. Oh, but he told. And that's why Paul was you. Paul was a tailor in the scripture. He was good in the scripture. Because they say, imagine yeah. say, to sit under his teacher, Galamel, you had to memorize the Torah. Paul was just a little mixed up on Yahshua. But once he got that, oh, it was on out there. Yeah. It was on out there. Just like some of us. Once we getting that Christmas ain't it, Easter ain't it, Sunday ain't it, now you're getting it. Yes, sir. You're getting it. Your eyes are being opened. Amen. Let's look at one more, then we'll move on. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 42. Can't leave out my boy Solomon. Only must book guys love to read Solomon because see, Solomon had all the wives. Yeah, but Solomon was able to take care of the wife. Yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> they were liking nothing. Quite right. I mean, uh, I heard it all. Go ahead and read. Matthew chapter 12, verse 42. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the generation uh -huh. and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Well, y'all didn't understand what he just said. <clears throat> notice, notice, notice what he said. He said that, that the queen of sheep, you can get that from 1 Kings. She came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. She came from the uttermost just to hear the wisdom of Solomon. She traveled just to come here, the wisdom of Solomon. And, and then she get there and she say, man, 
half of what I've heard about you, <laughs> they tell the whole story. She said, man, she, she said, I saw your people living so good. They so wealthy. They, oh, man, it was awesome. And the Bible said that the king or the queen gave Solomon a gift. Why? Because she understood that you never come to a king empty-handed. Amen. And you think Solomon was going to let her outdo him? The Bible says Solomon went to his treasure <laughs> and gave. See, you can never, now that's true, you can never beat the king out giving. But know why you give it to the king. Know why you give it to the king. So he said that Solomon, but he said now today, one greater than Solomon is here. And you can't come from Lamarck. <laughs> you can't come from Galveston. Yeshua is greater than Solomon. Amen. Because why? The writer of Hebrews said the one who built the house is greater than the one. Who house we are. So we lay some citations down of Yeshua that if the Tanakh was good for him, then it ought to be good for his students, which we are his students. We are his Talmudim, his disciples. We have to have this in, in our spirit, in our mind, it's being renewed that we ain't coming to a religion, sir. Yeah. We're coming to Man. a Bet Midrash, the house of study. So if it was called the house of prayer, but we never prayed, <laughs> it's just a beautiful name on the building. So the so the, the name tell you what we do here. And we understand that, that that our knowledge must lead to our information must lead to application. Then the application leads to transformation. Very important. We understand that. All right, let's look at another section here. Let's talk about the key to interpretation. The key to interpretation. Let's bring our attention to Acts chapter 8. This is a very powerful verse here. Acts chapter 8. Notice who, who, who is doing the work, how that you begin to evangelize. This text here shows us how to evangelize, how to minister to people. We're going to pick it up in verse uh, 26. Okay. Go ahead. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Uh -huh. And the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south into the way that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and he went, and behold, a man from Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, mm. was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Elias, um, which is Isaiah, the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran to, the, to him. And heard him read the prophet Elijah or Isaiah and said, Understand thou what you read? Do you understand what you read? And he said, How can I? Except some man should guide me. Mm. Notice the text. He's he listen, he has a Bible, wrong. He has a Bible, but he, he's in a situation that he don't understand it. See, you can have a Bible, but you need a teacher. Yeah. Man. You you need a teacher. He would not give the fivefold ministry. It's to teach. He is this, this man has power and authority. And he's reading the Bible, but he needs a teacher. And notice that who's doing all the evangelism is the Holy Spirit. He's guiding. And this man went up to Jerusalem. You know he's going to a feast, huh? He's celebrating to eat the oath of this black man. Going up to the feast. Think about that. Celebrating. And so notice that. In one of his visitations at the at the feast, I don't know what feast it was, but notice that the, the Ruach got him this time because he's been asking. He's been searching the scripture, right? And so notice how the text says, you come up to him and Philip say, do you understand? That's a key term right there. Ask people, do you understand? Even just this question, do you understand why you go to church? Just start with that. You'll be amazed at some answer that you get. Some people go to church just for the choir. No. Y'all know I ain't lying? 
Some people go to go to church because that's what grandma went and great grandma is just a tradition. And ain't nothing going on now. They know it. Amen. So here's this man here that Philip. As he picked it up in verse 30, and, 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 and he ran and he heard him reading. Notice, the man is reading. And Philip asked him one thing, do thou understand? Do you understand why we should keep the feast? Do you understand why we should keep the Shabbat? Yeah. Do you understand why we shouldn't eat unclean food, which is not food anyhow? Do you understand? Because if you don't understand, then people can talk you out of it. Right. You gotta understand why we should meet here, why we should study the Shah Shepherd proof. You gotta understand it. I can know the value of it, but do you? Right. You have to know that I can do just like those guys. I can get up here and, and take a few scriptures and just just have you just jumping around in here. But that's not teaching. Amen. I'm catering to the flesh. And if y'all wanted that, y'all would have stayed where y'all was from before. Am I right? Amen. So notice that he said, he said, do you understand? Do you discern? Because the Hebrew word would be but not mean to do you discern what you're reading? And notice that what he says here. He said, and he said, how can I? Listen, uh, listen how humble he is. You got to be humble. Yes, sir. Yah resist the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Most people ain't humble enough when you ask them, do you understand your Bible? What you mean, do I understand my Bible? Most people ain't humble enough. Yeah. That's right. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you? That's what I said. Do you understand why you do Easter? No, no, no. I know why they, I, listen, I know what they told you, but do you understand why you do it? You see, it's, it's very important. Yes, it is. We have to ask people questions. But notice that this person was reading. It's hard to teach somebody that don't, won't read. Uh -huh. Why? Because if you don't read, you do error not knowing the scripture. Right. Paul yeah. says in first Corinthians, I don't want you to be ignorant, unlearned, uneducated. So if a person is not reading, then it's going to be hard to teach them because they don't want to read. See? Very important. So Philip asked him, do you understand it? And notice what he said. How can I accept someone? Show. And that's what we're doing. This, 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 this man was humble enough to be taught. We all have learned things that's in error. And we've seen it. Now we're finding out more. Now we search searching the scripture. That's how we're finding out our error. If you don't search the scripture, you're not going to know. We, we had practiced things in here. We had did, we were doing Hanukkah and doing the menorah like that for eight days. But then we discovered in the book of Maccabees, it didn't say the menorah. It said the altar. And that's why we built the altar. But guess what? If we wasn't studying, if we just said, oh, no, it's Hanukkah. It's Hanukkah. And never was reading and just left it as that, we would not discover. Even if somebody would have brought it to us and told us, but because... They didn't bring us the information where they got it from because they got it from somebody else. Then I was like, oh, man, the dude's crazy. But because we read it for ourselves in the book, and that's why we stopped lighting a, lighting a uh, candle because ain't no eight-day miracle. They dedicated the altar for eight days. How did I discover that? Reading the book of Maccabees? Because that's where the story comes from. You see? And we learned that. And we had Hanukkah stuff out of the bum. We had to give it all, throw it all. I ain't give it away. I throw it away. It was made, we had beautiful stuff. I had this place docked down with Hanukkah. The star of Raphael Dean just flying around in this place. Learn about the star. You see? So, but if, if you stop studying and, and, you know, and you think that you, you have arrived because you crossed over no. and you stop, listen, that's counterfeit in Judaism as it will in Christianity. So I didn't stop studying. Yeah. We pulled down the flag in here. We don't have no so-called Jewish flag floating around in here. That's Raphael, the star of their God. The Bible talks about that. So a lot of things that when we uh, come and saw it, we got rid of it. Yeah, it was just like Christmas. 
oh, can we just keep this? This thing cost so much right here, boy. But hey, Karen, I had to take it and just throw it in the trash real fast. It was some nice stuff, I'm telling you. Something I'm like, oh man, don't even look at it. Just take the stuff and just <laughs> Yeah, the same experience that we had with Christmas, right? If you start going through that stuff, oh grandma gave me man through it all that. Well, I'm telling you, we have some yeah. beautiful stuff. It's, it's a money business the same way in Christianity. They yeah, know man. they will tell you now. Now we know that Jesus was not born on Christmas, but yeah. it's yeah. a business. Amen. They make Amen. merchandise of us on Christian side and Judaism. Yeah. It's a money. Wow. It's Babylon. So notice that the guy was humble enough to say, how can I accept a man should guide me? That's what I'm trying to do, guys, to guide. And then, and he desired Philip that he would come and sit down. Notice how this comes out. If somebody don't want you to come to their house and, and, and show them, don't go with them. This is a dialogue. This, this is the Holy Spirit. Learn that. You're trying to go to people that don't even have a desire. And listen, you could be in the room with a whole bunch of Christians that, let's say, chosen. Church folks, so they want to think I'm picking on church folks. And I was like, ain't nobody talking about the word in it. And they like get mad if you bring up the word. They like, ain't, ain't y'all believe? <laughs> Something wrong with this picture. See, that's a religion. Re religion, they just go to church. But how can you get us all together and we not talk about the word? Somebody got to bring up the word, but or something ain't right. Because we're not going to sit in this whole room and talk about the Dallas Cowboys or the Houston Texans. Uh -huh. And your face light up. No, we're not doing that. Okay? Now, we, we, we talk about the key to understanding the scriptures. Okay? Marcel, pick it back up in verse uh, 32. Acts 8, 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb from before his shearer, so opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away and shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaks the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Notice how the dialogue, I'm trying to show you how the dialogue, listen, if you're the only one that's talking and they never ask you questions, don't worry about it, they're not hungry. They're not ready. The shoes say, don't cast your pearls among the swine. So they're not ready. This man, the Holy Spirit told Philip to go there. That means they was ready. That man was ready. He was ready. Notice how the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding these things. And you'll learn all this here as you travel and you're dealing with people. Because you can't learn it just not talking to people. No, you learn who to witness to and who not? And you can just throw up certain words, by words, and see if the person is going to bite on it. Yeah. And if they don't, go about your business. So now, go ahead. Verse 35. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached him Yeshua. Notice, at the same scripture. Don't take them so well at the same scripture. You have to be able to write it divide the word. Go ahead. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all thy heart, thy may. And he answered and said, I believe that Yeshua HaMashiach is the son of Yah. Mm -mm -mm. Go ahead, testify, boy. Go ahead. <laughs> and he commanded the char chariot to stand still, and they went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Mm. Go ahead. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of Yah caught away Philip, and that eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Mm. That's tough right there. Notice that they, they both went down in, in the water. That described, should I be sprinkled? Tell you. The word mikvah means to go down in the water. Amen. They went down in the water. Y'all know that old song, they went down in the water? So Philip, that, that unit was so convicted by Philip explaining to him that he was that Yahshua. 
Notice that he said, if, you, if thou believe that Yahshua Hamashiach, the Mushiach, the son of Elohim, then you can. And notice it. The said, hey, stop that chair right there, man. He stopped it. He didn't wait till next week to be baptized. See, we, we created that, man. As we grow, we need to put some water, have our own thing right there. How many want to be mixed with today? All right. Not next week, today. Yeah. You give your life, you confess, let's get the water. Amen. We ain't got it like, okay, now next month we're going to baptize. We got gentlemen we're going to be baptized. No, no, no. Stop right there. Let's get in this water now. Yeah. Get in that water. That's how they did it. Hallelujah. They didn't wait. We need to get back to the book. Yeah. We don't baptize babies. The babies don't understand sin. Amen. It's very important. So notice how this transition went on how to witness to the people. Amen. So now, when, it, when we talk about the key to interpretation, watch this here. Everything must be centered on the Mushiach, the Messiah, Yahshua. Now, when we use the word Christ, you got to know what Christ you're talking about. Because the word Christ or pistol, uh, the Mushiach, only means anointing. So that's why they always put Yahshua, the Christ or the Messiah. Which Messiah are you talking about? Because Cyrus was called the Messiah, am I right? Because it only means anointing. So you want to always, uh, when you put Messiah, you always have to use a name. You, you, you just can't say, I love the Messiah. You can say that because I know what you're talking about. But you get around a bunch of people, a bunch of different religions, they ain't going to know what you're talking about. They're going to think you're talking about their Messiah. Uh -huh. Even that song that we sang here, you can sing that song in any congregation. I mean, any religion in the world. Our God is an awesome God. What God are you talking about? The only way you would know what God is talking about when he say and 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 he uh, that God wasn't joking when he when he drove him out of Egypt. Uh, 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 Eden. Eden. Eden, Eden, right? Now he said, but if, again, if you don't know the Bible, you ain't gonna know. So that song really don't, it can fit any religion. Any, I mean any, Hindu, any of them. I like it, but I don't like it. It's one of those. <laughs> but I say, now, nah, I, I just play it and explain it to people how that song can be played. Okay, now, Messiah is the key, guys. He is the key. Notice I, I gave you the verse early in Luke chapter 24, verse 27, which already have it. Beginning at Moses and the prophet and the psalm begin to explain him, all of them, right? Now, in Hebrews, let's read now Psalm, 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 Psalm 40, verse 6 and 7. And, in, and, and the writer Hebrew is, is going to cross reference Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. So let's write those two verses down and we'll read them. Because everything must be centered on Yahshua, the Messiah. He is the foundation. Paul said, no other foundation can be laid. Am I right? Right. Go ahead. Psalm chapter 40, verse 6. Sacrifice and honoring, uh, offering thou do not desire. My ears have thy opened. Burnt offering and sin offering has thy not required. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. me. That's what he's quoting. Yahshua is telling that. I come in the volume of the book, the scroll. And the writer of Hebrews got word of that because he knew the scriptures. Hebrews chapter 10. And we just read that one verse, 7. Hebrews 10, 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, the foundation the foundation to interpret the scripture is Yahshua. Your teaching must lead to the Moshua, the Messiah. Very important that we understand that. Very important that we understand that concept that it must lead us to the Messiah. Okay, now let's take a look at at uh, our theme. I want you to write this one down. It's, it's going to be Messiah is the theme to each of the eight sections in the scripture. I'm going to show you how we have these 
divided. There's eight sections when it comes to the Torah, okay, or the, the Holy Scriptures. We're going to look at the first section. It's called, it's called the law, okay, which is simple from Genesis to Deuteronomy. Very important. As I'm laying this down, it'll help your Bible study time. So the first four sections is the law from Genesis to Deuteronomy. The second section is history. You gotta know your history. You gotta know your history. So this, this comes from Joshua to Esther. Okay, knowing our history, how the kingdom was established. So knowing your history is very important. When you know your history, if we would have been taught this from the very beginning, we, we would have known right away they were the ones. We would have known right away why, because we would have had a map of Africa. We would know that don't add up, teacher. Explain that to me. <laughs> so, really, if you're going to teach, and we will have maps in here so that we can look, and that's why I have maps on that, so you can go and look at it like, oh no, something ain't right. Very important. That's why that, it's a map up there. I'll show them kids where Africa is, where Egypt is. And they'll say, no, nah, that's, that's impossible. Yes, ma'am. You said from Joshua to Esther. Right. It's not Esther. It's what? Ezra? Just put down, then I explain it. Okay. Poetry is from Job to the Song of Solomon. Because I'm assuming that you know your Bible. Job, Proverbs, see that. Okay. That's what I'm doing. Then prophecy is from Isaiah to Malachi. Say it again. Well, the prophecy is okay. from, from the book from Isaiah to Malachi. Okay. Now the second half, we're going to move to the Brit Hadashah or the New Testament, which is called the Gospels. Okay, so I'm trying to break down these eight sections. So I gave you the older side. Now I'm giving you the newer side. So it's called the gospel. I'm doing it. That's from Matthew to John. Mm -hmm. Then we have one book of history. It's the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. So now, if you if listen, if you never studied the book of Acts. It is the only history book. It show you how the church went from, from, from Judea to Rome and how it spread. Okay? But we just hang around uh, chapter 1 and 2 and might throw in a few other chapters. But no, no, no. If you study it, you'll know who these churches are. And Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, Olympians, you'll know who these people are. These letters that you're reading is reading to other churches. Okay? These churches that Paul established, and all this is in the history book of Acts. So now, when you study the book of Acts, you can say, okay, we might can disagree on some of the things that they said, but look at what they did. They met on this day, they kept the feast, they did everything. So if we're going to know the history of the Ecclesia, you got to study the book of Acts. And you'll begin to see all this clearly as we go. Now, you can see why this is a long job. But it's laying a foundation down. So now, the epistles, which is mean letters, that's all they are, letters, is from Romans to Jude. From Romans to Jude. Then we have the last one. The prophecy is the book of Revelation. So you can't really, no, nah, you can't study the book of Revelation correctly, interpret it correctly, if you don't know the book of Daniel and Ezekiel. All those symbols are already been given. The beast and all those people already been given. So you just can't run to the book of Revelation, start reading and say, well, who's the dragon? Who's the beast? Why well, you got to know Daniel and Ezekiel? So that's a lot of study. So now you can see why most people don't want to do that. So they confuse. Nobody understands the book of Revelation. No, you just ain't reading it right. 
You ain't studying it. Very important. So let's take a look at the law section, okay? I'm gonna I'm I'm break these down, okay? Is it hot in here or, or is it just me? Okay, I just wanna make sure. Okay, okay, okay. Amen, amen. All right. Let's look at, at the law section, okay? Now, keep this in mind, this is very important. The law section is the, it's the foundation. Mr. Charles, it's the foundation. It's the foundation. I'm telling you, it's the foundation. If the building has no foundation, it's going down. You will understand as we journey through the water, the enemy attacked. He, listen, he was not attacking the Old Testament, using this term, but he was attacking the foundation. The foundation. If I attack the foundation, then I can, I can put Adam and Steve together. Hmm? If I attack the foundation, which is the Torah, I can bring in Ishtar and, 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 and Christmas and Camus and all. I can do that. If I attack the foundation, and that's what it has done. It has tagged the foundation, but the foundation is the Torah. And that's why religion that, that holds itself under the umbrella, really, of the Roman Catholic Church, which we call Constantine or uh, Christianity, it ain't going to be able to stand. I promise you, it's not going to be able to stand. It's going to be judged. Because why? Wow, that is what Revelation chapter 17 say, the great whore that sits on many waters. She is a whore, has the cup in her hand, the cup of fornication, that has made all nations drunk on her. You got to know. In, in, in chapter 17, it's called the Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon. Ask the average person, what is Mystery Babylon? They don't know. Babylon is mixed, mixed religion. So if you do it with the foundation, Genesis, how would you know what is Babylon? All Babylon is is, 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 is mixed religion that has the mother as a god. You got to understand this here. All religion has the mother of God. No, we don't pray to Mary. Mary ain't God. The Roman Catholic Church does that. We don't make saints God. We are saints. We are kadosh. We are set apart. Amen. But when I destroy the foundation, which is the Torah, then you ain't going to know what I'm talking about. I can bring in anything. And as we go through it, you're going to see it real easy. The God has not changed. You just changed the name. That's all it is. We'll talk about that as we study. So the foundation is laid. Now, why is the Torah is important? Why is Genesis important? Is it based on one verse? Genesis 3.15. I will put image between your seed and her seed. Boy, if you miss that point there, if you if you don't grasp that verse right there, that verse is, is, is built on everything. That that the, the seed is going to come through a, 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 a female. Okay, it's going to come to seed. And the enemy knows that. So he wants to destroy the seed before it comes. Very important. Watch this. So let's talk about the foundation. So in Genesis, this, this is the theme. Genesis is the theme, is, is the election. Yah is going to choose. Okay, son, I'm going I'm to need you to, uh, not, hey, hey, don't be doing that, okay? Genesis is the election, okay? Why? Because... Because it, it's in Genesis that Yah is going to go from the nation to an individual called Abraham. He's going to choose a seed. He's going to choose a seed that the Messiah is going to come through. And you're going to see that as we study Genesis. You're going to see that he goes from, from a, a, a dealing with the nation in Genesis chapter 11 to dealing with a person. Abraham choosing the seed of Shem. Okay? Shem. That's why... You, uh, uh, people are called Shemites. And that's why those that are in the land, once again, I ain't picking on them, they can't be called Shemites because they trace their genealogy back to Japheth. So, technically, you can't say that I'm anti Semitism because you ain't a Shemite. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. That's why they don't call themselves Jews, they call themselves Jewish. Ah, oh, I know, I'm messing up somebody. So now at this very point, so I'm just going, going to lay it down. Then as we travel through it, you'll be in the city. I want your Bible to come alive. In, in the book of Exodus, 
the theme for Exodus is redemption. Because we're going to see that God going to promise Abraham that your seed is going to go down and going to be enslaved, but I'm going to bring them out. And so when we look at Abraham, the first thing that we see in Genesis is that Abraham, there was a famine. Am I right? There was a famine. And Abraham went to Egypt. Pharaoh saw the bride, took the bride, and what did y'all do? Plague his house. A prophetic picture that how your descendant is going to go down to Egypt and I'm going to plague them. And they're coming out. When, when, when Pharaoh let uh, uh, Abraham go, gave him good, gave him funds. So y'all saying the same thing is a picture. Watch this here. So now this, this is very important right here because Abraham told Isaac and Isaac told Jacob and Jacob told Joseph when he got down to Egypt. How do you think Joseph knew that? Jacob told, told Joseph in Genesis chapter 46 that, that, that God told Jacob, don't be afraid to go down to Egypt. I'm going to go with you and I'm going to bring you up out of here. So Jacob told Joseph. So Joseph told his brothers, listen, God is going to visit you. And when he bring you out, you bring my bones. That's a prophecy. And the Exodus wants us to know in Exodus chapter 13, verse 19, it says, when they came out of Egypt, they took the bones of Joseph. All oh, is a prophecy. You gotta know the prophecy. This thing that you see happening before your eyes is kingdom restoration. It's not a black thing, it's a biblical thing. Hallelujah. Because if I'm coming back for a particular people, I gotta, they gotta know that I'm coming back for them. They gotta know who they are. Hallelujah. And they will switch. Why? When man slept, they switched it on us. When did they switch it on us? In slavery. You don't think they know who the people is? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They know the prophecy. Yeah, they know the prophecy. The enemy know the prophecy. Couldn't, couldn't get us, could not curse us, but he can get us to curse ourselves. How? By breaking the Torah. Because you can't curse what Yah has blessed. Amen. But you can get the people to bless the, to curse themselves. So we see Genesis is the election of the nation, which we know that what the Messiah, listen, it's all about the Messiah. It's all about the seed of the woman. Okay? Then we see the exit was redemption of the seed. And then in the book of Leviticus is the sanctification. This is very important. So why? We're going to be set apart. We're going to be in this world, but not of this world. And if you go back and look at those maps back there, you see that Israel was surrounded by the Moabites, the Canaanites, everybody. For why? So they can be a witness. And when we study the Tanakh, you're going to see one thing. It's going to be polytheism or polytheism versus monotheism. One true Elohim versus many. That's the, that's the battle. We are declaring there's only one way. Over oh, Whitman said there's many ways. See, same teaching. They teach there's many ways. The scripture said that's one way. One way. And that's what we are proclaiming. So in the book of Leviticus, we're looking at sanctification. How are we to be set apart? That's all the word is. It means to be set apart. He gives us our diet. He gives us our feasts. All in the book of Leviticus. This is the book of covenant. This is not a book just for anybody. You got to be in a covenant, a breach. That's what he's trying to teach us in the book of Vayikra, how to set us apart, to be different from the nation. People should see us, and we ought to be different, not to apologize that we don't do Christmas no more. It wasn't us anyhow. We don't have to apologize for that. If you know who your Elohim is, you ain't got to apologize for that. If one call of your own home and say, come with us to a feast, he said, don't go with them. Don't be feeling sorry. Why do people feel most sorry Amen. to not tell you your family stuff, but don't feel how you hurt his feelings? Something Amen. wrong with this picture here. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm married. I ain't got to apologize to my girlfriends in the back. Why, uh, way back in the day, why I won't give her a hug? Amen. Amen. I'm married. Right. I remember I was outside doing something, and Miss Jefferson was there, and my son mother pulled up. Well, I already know that she wanted, she was going to give me a hug, right? I said, don't go no, nowhere. Don't go nowhere. I told her, don't go nowhere. And when she got out the car, I said, hey, don't hug me. Now, it was friendly, but people are going to be passing by. 
I got to protect myself. I, I, I live in the city. She just was happy to see me, but they don't know that. Right. You see what I'm talking about? Man, I got to protect myself, man. Man, they waiting on them to put some dirt on me. Yeah. I stand here, my, my hands clean. I ain't creeping nowhere. I ain't being in no place. I ain't hanging out with y'all. I ain't, I don't know what y'all doing. All my family over there, I don't know what they been doing. I don't know if they're selling dope. I don't know what they doing. You see? And I can just be pulling up that mic to say, hey, hey, how y'all doing? And the day the task force come. <laughs> man. Now, I'm going to get out. But listen, they see me coming in hand because they see I told you I knew he was using that place for front. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Amen. Amen. They Amen. ask me why I don't come. Y'all know why I don't come. <laughs> you know why I don't come. Amen. I, I used to go over one house and nah, I ain't stupid. I see what's going on. Huh? That's right. When they start moving around when I'm coming, I know something going on. So you hear me? Man, I'm not crazy. I love you from a distance. Burr, burr, wave at you. <laughs> Don't get caught up like that. Why? Because we're condors. We're sanctified. I don't come to pagan holidays. I don't do pagan things like that. But you can just come sit with us. No, that's bell altar. No. You see? Because yeah. we'll set apart. We'll set apart. Do you hear me? We'll set apart. We don't have to apologize for not coming to a feast that we know conviction. So you got to have conviction. You got to have information. You got to read for yourself. It can't be because I said so. I got strong conviction and it ain't no problem. Why? Because of, of the scripture. And that's why Paul said, if I was still trying to please you, I couldn't please God. Amen. So now in the book of Numbers, if you if you notice that in the book of Numbers is when they're traveling in the desert, in the wilderness. Right. It's a terrible place. You can't survive in this place. You can't survive in the wilderness. Nobody lives out there. It's crazy to go out there. It's furious, heat, cold. And there's Yago with you. Uh, huh? Yeah. He took them. He tells you why he led us through the wilderness, why he led us through the desert. Let's read that verse. Uh, uh, Devil Ring, because you should know that verse, huh? Devil Ring, that is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8. We started at verse 1. Why is he going to tell us why he led our father through the wilderness? That's right. If you understand that, then you'll know why he's leading you in a direction that's not, it's uncomfortable to you, but it's the best way to go. Amen. He's like, I don't like going this way. I don't like begging. I don't like borrowing stuff. I used to have my own. He said, yeah, but I'm new. I'm doing it so I can humble you. So you won't be too proud to beg. <laughs> uh -huh. Man. Man, it's a, listen, it's a, it's a humbling feeling when you used to being up here and you never had to ask your kinfolk for nothing. Now you have to come borrow gas money. Oh my goodness. Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse one. Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse one. Which is Deborah chapter eight, verse one. Watch this here. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live. And multiply and go in, go in and possess the land which Jehovah, which Yah swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Yah, thy power, lead thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee. I, hold on, slow down. Listen, listen. Why? This this 38 years, because they spent two years at Mount Sinai getting the instruction. So this is the 38, the book of Numbers, we call it the 38 years journey in the wilderness. Now he's going to tell you why he led us that way. And anybody had any sense that reads the Torah, you have to know that's us. Amen. Ain't nobody more stubborn than us. I'm telling you, you can't read. I'm, you, you, there's no way you can get, you get away from that. Go ahead. Verse 2 again. And thou shalt remember all the way which, the, which Yah, thy power, led these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee, to prove thee, to know what was in thy heart, whether thou would keep his commandments or not. Mm -hmm. And he humbled you and suffered you to hunger, to feed you with manna, which he knew not, neither did your fathers know, that he may make thee know that the man doth not live by bread alone, but by every Amen. word that proceed out of the mouth of Yah doth man live. Notice that. So he tell us why he led us, our fathers, that away. The humble, 
Why? We know the old saying. It came out of Egypt in one day, but it took them 40 years, but they still not, didn't get Egypt out of them. They, they grew up in them. They was in the pagan worship. They sacrificed. He tells them to put away their idols while they was in Egypt. They was, did y'all know our father was down there doing the same stuff? They were down there doing their pagan worship. The same way that we in America, we learned the ways of the nation. Now he's calling us out of the nation. I will foster them had to do the same thing. I'm going I'm to show it to you again. We're about to land this is. I can't believe the kids had beat us. Uh, let's go to uh, Ezekiel chapter 20. I'm going to show you the same pattern, right? The same pattern. He leads us into the nation to be a, a, a witness, a, a, a witness or a die to the nation, but we take on the flavor of, of the nation. So in Ezekiel chapter 20, start at verse 7. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 7. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abomination of his eyes, and defile not yourself with the idols of Egypt. I am Jehovah thy power. Do what? He said, listen, he telling them what they was doing. Put away this stuff. The same way he called us, put away image. Cush and all them, the, the pagan gods that, that we inherited when we was in this country. There's no thing that we practice. He said, now he's calling us, put away these things. Go ahead. But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away their abomination of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. Mm. See? What he's called us to do? Put away those things. Put away. Once we discover things, we don't take Easter and Passover and put it on, 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 on one table. No. We have one altar. Amen. Amen. One altar. See, when the scriptures say that, that we are to sanctify ourselves, people say sanctify yourself. That means set yourself apart for the most high. So that's one. One heart. That means that it has to be for Yah. Loving him. I don't share it with Baal worship. I don't have no secret altars in me. So he's teaching us, put away these things. This is what this book is about. But when I teach it in a way that this is done away with and this is done away with, then it's contradiction. This book is holy. It's for holy people. Go ahead, Marcel. A few, a few more verses. Verse 9. But I write my namesake for my namesake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were. In whose sight I made myself known unto them, uh -huh. and bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt, and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes, and showed my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover, I, also I gave them my Sabbaths, to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am Yah that sanctified them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walk not in my statutes, and they despise my judgment, which if a man do, he shall live in them. And my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. As, I mean, when you really read, you will see that we put our own self in trouble. We put our own self in trouble. Y'all killed one of our fathers. Then after a while, say, okay, I got my man. He's a he's anointed. He's 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 my servant. He, he's coming to get you. Nezekanezek come. Oh, Nezek come. So he raised him up. Y'all can use if y'all use Nezekanezek to to punish our forefathers. He can use the white man to punish us. See, we can get twisted. They they got us thinking that it's the white man. No, our fathers broke the covenant and Nebuchadnezzar came and dissed them. And guess what? It passed down to the children. But now our eyes are being opened. We, we are repenting from breaking the covenant. Now restoration can start. Now it won't fall on our children. Why? Because it's stopping with us. Hallelujah. It's stopping with us. Yes, sir. That they don't have to deal with that and stand strong in this walk that God has given us. We are people. He is with us. He is with us. So it's very important. 
Amen. Amen. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop right there. Amen. Amen. Any question? Because we got a lot to cover, but I'm gonna stop right there since the kids are in. Any question, Jace? Don't be talking around my microphone. Okay, get in service. Any question? That's it. I guess I'm gonna do a good job, Helen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right, well, let's get ready for our, our offering time. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You can put this back for me, Marcel, please. We want to thank those who are tuning in. We want to, to thank you for tuning in to our Shabbat service. I pray that something was said here that uh, was a blessing. Okay, let's make sure the kids, uh, we need to get them more order and Structure, so I'm gonna need someone to take charge of the kids with the so one can be on one side, one can be on the other side. You have a, a question? Yeah, uh, I got the comment. Oh, okay, you want to hear about comment. Christmas? Uh huh. That's something that I don't believe in, uh -huh. and that was it. Yeah. Because of the Bible, amen. And I talk preachers and everything, I show them in the Bible where, uh huh, but some for some reason people try to go with it. Right, right. Yeah. Nobody knows when Jesus Christ was born. And when he was born, I think it's the first two years, he was uh -huh. born because they sent him away to kill him. Uh -huh. Right. So all that is for people volunteer in their mind because it's not in the Bible nowhere. Right, right. And we'll deal with those subjects, uh, you know. They come from a Western view when people say, well, nobody knows, and yes, they do. Yes, we do. Our, the reason that they don't know because they don't know the feast. <laughs> Have a They don't know the feast. Is that a, they gave us time, but because we read the Bible from a Western perspective, then we don't understand uh, uh, these feasts or these more deans. So if he died on a feast, it's definitely that he was born on a feast. Okay, everything surrounds the biblical festivals. Amen. Is that it? 